Hi, I'm Cecilia with Cotter Team Press, and we're here with some actors. Viva. Annie. And Hunter. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Okay. How do you manage your time between theater, school, and other activities? I don't. <laughs> yes. Neither do I. Um, <laughs> that's like, it's, uh, yeah. Um, Viva? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult, and normally you kind of end up not getting a lot of sleep and skipping lunch and stuff, because it's, you got to just try to find random times throughout the day where you can sneak in doing your homework or memorizing lines, and yeah. Yeah, like literally in between classes, you'll be walking through the halls and you, yeah, you'll have to tell your friends to go away from you because you'll be standing there walking through the halls with your script just trying to memorize or get homework done that you should have got done when you were trying to memorize. <laughs> um, what are some of your best memories of theater? My fifth grade year was my first ever musical. Uh, it's called The President's New Clothes. It was like, uh, it was, it was something. Uh, but someone with actual lines, I was chorus this year, uh, someone with actual lines quit like three days before the show. Uh, we're not gonna say. Uh, <laughs> uh, David French. Um, <laughs> but um, Miss Rutgers needed someone to fill in his place, so uh, he chose me and I had to memorize those lines. So I was really scary, but I was really happy, and that really started off my whole love for theater. Okay, I have two. The first one is in President's New Clothes, when someone who shall, rename, who shall remain nameless flooded the boys' bathroom on purpose. <laughs> and it is the scariest I have ever seen Mr. Wreckers to this day. And I've known him for over half of my life, I've been in plays with him multiple times a year, and it is the scariest I've ever seen him. And now it's funny to me, but at the time, I didn't do anything wrong, but I went home and I cried and I cried. <laughs> I was so scared. So that was really fun. And then, <laughs> and then also um, on a not funny note, um, when I did Mary Poppins with, um, I was Jane Banks and um, Colin, the other actor from Cotter. He was um, Michael, and now we're like best friends. And it's because we basically had to live with each other while we were doing that show because it was an over three hour show. And Colin and I were in every single scene except for one crossover that took like five minutes. We had more lines than Mary and then Bert. Um, I had hundreds and hundreds of lines. And so just the memories from that, from like living at the theater, you know, like, oh, okay, I swear I'm almost done. But one time, one time it was so, okay, KFC closes at 10 p.m., okay? Um, I was, we were doing a run of the show, um, and it was like, you know, it was like after 10 p.m. And my one actor friend, Caleb, at the time, worked at KFC. So Colin and I, us cute little kids, were like, we're so hungry. We've been acting for five hours. Like, we just want something to eat. So then Caleb went to KFC, and they always throw away the old KFC at, after the night is over, obviously, because anyways. Um, <laughs> and so we sat in the green room, and we just had, like, a feast of KFC, just us <laughs> tiny little kids at, like, 11 p.m. It was so cool. Well, one of the things that I do for theater is I'm involved in the Home and Community Options show, and I've been doing that since I was six years old, and one of my favorite memories is about four years ago, I think, there was one of the people who was supported by HCO started doing the show, and she was nonverbal. She didn't really communicate with others. She couldn't really speak, and, and then after doing HCO, she's done the show for like three years now, and... She has become such a social person. It's so fun to see the way that the show has allowed her to interact with people and work on her communication skills. And now whenever she sees me, she like comes up to me and she asks me how I am. And one time she booped me on the nose. Uh, that just, it just makes me so happy to see the way that theater changes people's lives.
That's awesome. Um, how has acting changed you throughout the years? Well, um, I've gotten to know a lot of people. Uh, like ninth grade, we did West Side Story, and that's a heavy male cast. And I have a lot of more female friends, so it kind of opened me up to having male friends, <laughs> I guess. Um, it, it made me a little bit more of a social person, but less immature. Uh, and it did really help me um, become more organized and responsible with my time. It has made me much more patient. <laughs> it's okay. when we get down to the last few weeks of rehearsals and everyone's trying to do their best. It's like you just got to take a deep breath and know that everyone's doing their best and it's hard on a lot of people. And it's also really opened my mind to seeing the different the, just like the different abilities that people have both in terms of like some people that you never knew could dance can do choreography like nobody's business and in terms of working with home and community options seeing the way people who are like ignored by some people in society can become very unique individuals through theater I don't really know if I could say that like answer the question that theater has changed me over the years because I've really grown up with it constantly in my life so it really didn't have a chance to change me in any way because when I first started acting I didn't know who I was at all obviously because I was so little um and so I've just grown up with it but I do think that it gives me the opportunity to um learn things about life that normal kids my age don't get to have an understanding of that's because I'm 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 still so young like I'm only 17 but I have had the opportunity to be so incredibly vulnerable in roles and feel pain through the characters that I get to play um to the point where I'll be on stage and I'll feel so much pain that I just cry on stage because I feel that pain and and it's it's an experience that other kids my age don't get to have at all and I have become so enriched and I am so much more of a full person and I understand the beauty of life so much more because I have had the opportunity to be in to have these roles and to to watch these shows um it's yeah it's just the most incredible incredible opportunity to to act uh how is do you see yourself doing theater in the future <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah yeah Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I. The thing that's really cool about growing up is that you get to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life, and a lot of people, some not a lot of people, but some people like choose what they want to do for a living based on like how much money it makes, so, so yeah, and <laughs> stuff like that. But I don't care if I'm incredibly extremely poor when I'm an adult I just want to act for as long as possible because like I said before to tell stories to people and to change their viewpoint of life and to change their lives through just me being on a stage and reciting lines like that is the most incredible thing to me that I can't even grasp like my head around and so then to think that I could do that for the rest of my life, like, and get paid for it, hopefully, please, um, <laughs> that is definitely the plan for my future. Sorry. Uh, no, definitely, I, I definitely will be doing theater in my future. I'm hoping to major in theater for college. Um, <laughs> there is a school in Los Angeles and New York. There's two different campuses. I'd love to go to the, yeah, AMDA. Yeah. I'd love to go there. Um, no, my main plan for my future is to go into theater. Uh, 
Hopefully it works out so I'm not living in a cardboard box. We can share an apartment together and be poor together. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, well, I, theater is definitely a big part of my life, and I'd like to keep doing it, probably more on like a community theater level. All right, thank you.